Hi, I'm Dr. Lauren Byers. I'm a professor in the Department of Thoracic and Head and Neck Medical Oncology. And I'm here today with Dr. Jennifer Litton, Vice President of Clinical Research. And this is the Cancer Wise podcast. Thanks, Jen. I really appreciate you being here today. You know, and we've <laughs> we've been friends for so long. This is so fun to do this podcast together. It really is. I mean, it's great to uh, to be back together. And <laughs> and um, you know, I was going to talk a little bit about a phone call that I got from you a few years ago. Absolutely. So you called me about a consult um, for somebody, but this was a little bit unusual because it wasn't your patient. Can you tell me a little bit about why you called me that day? You know, I, I will. I, I, I called you because, you know, as an oncologist and we've been treating cancer patients for a very long time, you know, it, it inevitably at some point comes home and hits someone you love. And in this case, it was my dad. And, you know, it's a really interesting story because, um, and I know we've known each other for so long, but I never even wanted to be a doctor. I didn't grow up thinking I was going to be a doctor. I was an English and history double major and didn't take a single pre-med class. And um, I was working at the restaurant I've always worked at all through college, and I went back and except for October rolled around and I had graduated and um, my boss, I didn't have anywhere to go. I was still didn't know what I wanted to do. And my boss at that time, he was a scalloper and he said, well, why don't you scallop through the winter? And I thought this seems very Hemingway-esque and I should definitely do that. And I remember a very specific phone call from my father very calm. He picked up the phone and all I heard was, I want to see you in 48 hours with a life plan. And then the phone hung up and you think, I have to come up with something big. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, no pressure at all. So what sounds really big? Oh, I'll go to medical school. I said, That's fine. That's great. Okay. Go to medical school. And I did a post back. I did a pre-med and I, I worked as a study coordinator uh, running clinical trials in the breast clinic um, at another cancer center and was immediately very hooked on being a cancer doctor, doing cancer research, and doing breast cancer research, and then was very directed on getting to Houston, getting to MD Anderson, and joining the breast group here, which I did. And, you know, been so lucky to be here, have been working on research and kind of a full circle from starting as a study coordinator to now running clinical trials. And I, I got another 48 hour phone call saying, we need you to step in as the vice president of clinical research running all the trials. And that phone call was for me to start on March 1st, 2020. Wow. <laughs> so we all knew what was about to happen. Uh, I didn't know at the time. And so March 1st, 2020 hits and uh, I come in and two weeks later with COVID and we have to rethink everything about clinical research, how we even, um, you know, do all of the different regulatory matters, how we move tissue and blood specimens across you know, I think a lot of places just closed down trials completely, but, and I know you feel the same way as I do, that, you know, clinical trials and clinical research is how we care for patients at MD Anderson, and it's not something we do on the side. You know, yeah. sometimes it's, you know, the patient's best hope. Yeah. I, I remember um, during that time, you know, there were new walls being put up to protect patients from, you know, risk of infection. But I also remember there was a scientist in our group who was really um, adamant that we included a, a pass-through window for the samples so that even though the people in, you know, the, the clinical side were being, you know, kind of limited in terms of not having a lot of people come across, you know, into where the patients were, but the samples and the research could still continue. And I just thought that was so amazing to, you know, to see how people pulled together to, to keep that going. Absolutely. I mean, I think we're one of the cancer centers. We kept 98% of our trials open uh, when most 
places weren't able to do that. And that's because everyone from, you know, every part of MD Anderson just really dug in to get this done because we know how important it is for our patients. But little did I know how important that would be for my own dad. You know, I, um, around November of that year, he'd had a cough and it just wouldn't stop. And he got diagnosed with a stage three lung cancer. And I think that's exactly when I called you, uh, uh, I did a full phone a friend and talked about, you know, his diagnosis and that, you know, what should we do? I remember that very well. And I, I knew that you had also helped me many times when people had reached out for, for your expertise. And so. It is one of the beauties of MD Anderson that we all really do take care of each other too and, and help each other through this. And, you know, he, he took neoadjuvant uh, preoperative chemotherapy and immunotherapy and had surgery. And he was doing well. He had some side effects from the, from the um, immunotherapy. But about a year later, so November 2021, he's coming down the escalator at an airport and he gets really dizzy and he falls. And he, they bring him to the hospital and they do an MRI and um, they just see two numerous brain mats, oh. right? And we're both oncologists. So, you know, you know, when I heard too many to count, I remember that phone call where I called him and I said, oh, dad, I'm, I'm so sorry. Like, we're going to get you radiation. We're going to get you steroids. We're going to get you hospice. And I know you've had oh. to have lots of conversations with folks like that yeah, too. That must have been a real shock for you yeah. and for and to you know have to it also talk to your dad about what that meant and how serious that was. How serious this was, absolutely. Except for one of the things is he had a very very rare mutation in his tumor that's only in about I believe and I'll ask you about 2% of patients it's called a ret fusion. And he ended up not getting radiation. He ended up um, taking a pill and the pill had just gotten emergency use authorization based on a trial led here at MD Anderson and for which we kept open in March of 2020 uh, to help get that data. And I know this has been big in in lung cancer. Wow. No, that's incredible. And it it is. I mean, it's this is the 20th anniversary of the very first um, of its type in terms of having pill treatments to be able to treat lung cancers. And since then, you know, the research has been so critical. And it's I, I tell many of my patients who I see now, I said, you know, you, you may be benefiting from a treatment that isn't even approved yet, um, but that either as part of a clinical trial or something that gets approved, you know, during the time that you're, you know, receiving cancer care, because really the the pace of, of progress because of research and, you know, the patients who participate in that has really changed, you know, what, what we can offer and how we can personalize treatments for each person. Are you getting genomic testing? So looking at DNA changes now in most of your patients with metastatic cancer and maybe some in the early stage too? Yeah, it's been really interesting recently. So we we definitely are getting um, these types of biomarkers and and um, testing for the different gene alterations in um, in basically all of our patients. Initially, um, you know, in the for, for several years, it was really the patients who had the most advanced lung cancers where these were approved. But now we've we found that um, there's a benefit also, for example, for patients who um, are undergoing surgery or receiving radiation. And so some of those patients can have these personalized targeted pill treatments um, included as part of their treatment. And so really that has has kind of changed the paradigm and now, you know, essentially all of our patients are being tested for those up front so we can use that as part of how we, you know, provide the best and most personalized, you know, treatment approach for them. So for a lot of you on this podcast, you might not know, but uh, Dr. Byers has been, you know, not only an amazing clinician, but has done so much discovery in the lab and really identifying new targets that might have been common in other cancers, but hadn't been 
exploited yet in lung. And maybe could you just say a couple words about what you're excited about working on these days? Yeah. So I think there are, are you know, a couple of things. I mean, first of all, it's just amazing to see how many patients, um, you know, I am a, you know, get to take care of who are benefiting from current clinical trials. And several of these you know, medicines that uh, patients are on are things that we've been sort of hoping to have for, you know, for many years, but now we have, you know, more and more options to, to offer to people. So that's, you know, something that we're really excited about. The other thing, you know, one of the cancers that I work on is, has been a very challenging type of lung cancer to treat um, for, and not, you know, as much progress for that type of lung cancer in the past, you know, many years. Um, but one of the things that we've found now is that that type of cancer is actually four different types of cancers. And we're getting ready to start the first clinical trial that will match those patients to specific treatments based on which type of um, cancer they have. And so that that's something that we're really excited about. It is so exciting. You know, when I, when I, back to when I was a study coordinator a little bit ago, um, you know, the trials were all here are the four different chemotherapies we use and how should we either sequence them or combine them. And now just the rate of discovery. And I've said this and I really do believe it in breast and I, I truly have seen it now in lung where the rate of discovery for some of my patients is really outpacing their disease mm -hmm. for the first time in, in a, the couple decades that I've been practicing. It's, it's really true. I have a patient who I saw this week and I he's responding really well to a brand new type of, um, of treatment for aggressive lung cancer. And you know I said to him, I'm you know so thrilled that he is benefiting from it, but also that I'm you know very you know hopeful that by his being part of the trial that there'll be many other people who will also be able to benefit from that down the road. It's just so exciting. Well, it was so great to get to talk to you about this. And I will, I will give you the update that my dad is still without evidence of disease now since 2021. And, you know, we're just um, taking it day by day. But, um, you know, really grateful for all the work that your group has been doing in this space. So thank you. Thank you. It's great being here with you. And we'll look forward to hearing more about how your how your dad is doing and, and updates. Absolutely. Well, thanks again for being here today and for sharing your story. Thank you. For more information or to request an appointment at MD Anderson, call 1-877-632-6789 or visit mdanderson.org. And thanks for listening to the CancerWise podcast from MD Anderson Cancer Center.